Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. In tonight's nightcap, I make a start. Don't sort of like a dummy assembly on the crankshaft for the vertical steam engine I bought. Uh, I have a bit of clear almost shrink fits just to see what sort of how much I can get away with by heating the part up and shrinking it onto a crankshaft. What sort of strength I'm going to get. Uh, interesting results. In the second part of tonight's nightcap, I make some. Um, that like cock and lever bolts for a, an air rifle for a friend of mine, he's customising the air rifles and he wanted some different cock and levers making so I play with a knurler and some stainless steel, get a little bit done of that. As you can see I've got my period steam engine attire on, I've been at Beamish Open Air Museum all day with Richard uh, with a Sentinel steam wagon I'm going to be there again all day tomorrow, hopefully if the weather stops fine. I'm waiting for Mick to come across with Stig and hopefully Stig's going to have another go at uh, drawing him out of the bucket, uh, which will be fantastic. You ready then, Stig? Come in. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Stig. Good boy. Good lad. Come here. Good lad. Let's see. <laughs> come on, you little come tinker. On, come on, ah. get good lad. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. That was the man of the moon, wasn't it? Aye, it was. Excellent. Didn't one, probably. Hey, stick. Good lad. <laughs> I'm going to do another giveaway this week. This week's giveaway is going to be a bit of drill gauge, a more and right drill gauge, and a nice more and right tool maker's clamp. Two really useful items for the workshop. I've got, I think I've got three of them, and I've got a drawer full of tool maker's clamps. This one was given to us. It um, it come in a box of various sort of tools I got, which will be ideal for a giveaway. So if you want to win the giveaway. All you have to do is send me an email, that's my email address up there. Send me an email with your name on, your name goes into the bucket. It's drawn out by me or Debsy or even Stig the dog. If you, your name's drawn out, I'll post it off, totally free of charge, anywhere in the world. All it is is a little, a little way of me giving things back. Um, I've had so much given to us and I've had so much support and people now are actually sending things in just to go into the giveaway. It's a good way of sharing things away, sharing things around. Instead of having a draw for a den gear, or a draw for a these, I'll give them away and somebody else can use them. Anyway, if you want to partake, just send us an email with your name on. Warren Wright drill gauge. It's actually in metric as well. Quite a nice bit of bit of gear, quite useful. Then there's this Warren Wright. Machinist clamp or engineer's clamp. This arrived in the post at work this week um, from a viewer. A really nice set of pin punches because my collection of pin punches is pretty miserable. Uh, but these are nice ones, are German, they appear to be really good quality. G door, I've got some G door spanners. Made in Germany. Anyway, thanks very much for sending those in, and I'm sure you'll see them used a lot in the shop. I've dismantled the engine a little bit further, uh, and one thing I have not found there's no maker's name, casting mark, anything at all on this engine up to now. I've been thinking about making a crank. Uh, and I've kind of decided I'm going to make it on similar lines to a two-stroke crank. I'm going to use material like that for the webs, straightforward stock bar material. And what I'll probably do is bolt on counterbalance weights. So I'm going to use inch silver steel with these pieces here for the crank webs. I've decided to bore these and ream them 78 to be a shrink fit. On the shaft, turn the shaft down so it's a nice shrink fit on the 78s. 
recess the back and weld. So I'm going to weld the main bearings in the big end pin is going to be just a press fit so I can use that to line up the crank. The thing with the mains is that's that's where all the torque is, the turning motions on there. Where with the main with the big end bearing, it's more pushing motion, a shear motion. So you've got torque on the main bearing, trying to turn it, and on a big end pin, it's more of a pushing motion and a pulling motion. I've done quite a few two-stroke cranks, lining them up that way, and they work no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit of scrap bar, drill it ream at 78s. Machine this down to whatever size, it'll be a good heat shrink fit. Heat shrink it in, weld it, and see what sort of distortion I get, if any. I'll use the same bit of scrap I used the last time. Just set this up on the, the four jaw chuck. To be running roughly true. Much it is because it's flat against the jaws of the chuck, so it can't you more chance other than, than running through. Right, so I'm going to drill and ring that hole to 70 eighths. Machine a bit of inch bar down to whatever size above 70 eighths makes it a shrink fit. I'll look at the charts and see what they say. Press it in, or at shrink it in, weld it, and see how much distortion I get between that and the shaft. I don't think I'll get any. And like I say I'm going to weld the main bearings in the big end just be a press fit. I'm just going to take a light cut off this here just to make sure it is nice and square. And also a practice to see what sort of finish I can get on an interrupted cut when I cut the machine the front way properly. That's certainly acceptable. Of course you often find you get a good finish when it doesn't matter.
all that road to 22 mil. I just hope I'm going too big. I think I have. 750 is the size we need but that remote wasn't taking a great look there if anything right I've made a balls of that right here 750 we want Spot on. Seven five zero. Yeah, I'm gonna put a big world radius in there so I can get some decent weld material into it. Put your finger in there. They'll arrive it off as soon as look at it. That's the method I've adopted now for tightening the, the chucks on. Two good taps with a head hammer. You should always take things like that out the, the tail stock because that really does want to slice your arm open. It doesn't really care where it cuts. Put a clock on this and see how accurate it's running because I can always bump the chuck around a slightly to get it absolutely, absolutely spot on. But that does look good. I found the repeatability with this is within a thou normally, so. That's going to be a 3,000 interference fit in that hole. So I'll warm that up and see if it'll drop in. Make sure there for it to rest up against. Put a taper on there so I've got a, a nice place to fill with well. I'm not sure how much heat it'll take to get this to drop in. 
I may have to, um, he's actually certainly in the work, I'm not sure. Before I weld this, I put it back in the lathe. I'm going to run a clock along it just to see. It's never moved, it's still. And we'll, we'll face that. Right, so that was a full throw shrink fit on there. I think what I'll do with this, instead of welding it, I'll fasten it on with silicon bronze, silicon braze it, and then I can do a simple test to see how strong it actually is. I think just Simply being a fourth house ring fit, it's going to be strong. So I'll run some silicon bronze around there, put it back in the lathe and see if it's actually pulled it, warped it. I don't think it will. Well, it possibly will, but I don't think that the silicon bronze will affect it that much. Quite a simple test on this, just to see how much torque it'll actually stand. I think it'll probably stand quite a lot, of, quite a large amount actually. The big stiltons are at work, unfortunately, so I'll have to try and make these ones a little bit bigger. Right, I've managed to find a nice extension piece for the stilsons so we can put a bit of torque on this. Just to see what it actually will take. A lot. Right, it's sheared there. 